What's going on gardeners? On today's two minute garden tip, I'm going to share with all of you the number one mistake to avoid when growing sweet potatoes. If you've been gardening for a while, you've probably heard of the benefits of crop rotation. We rotate crops for four major reasons. Number one, it reduces disease pressure. Garden diseases need a host to survive. Rotating a vulnerable host can disrupt the reproductive cycle of a pathogen. Number two, it reduces pest pressure. Just like diseases, rotating a vulnerable host can disrupt the reproductive cycle of insect pests. Three, different crops require different balances of soil nutrients. Planting the same crop in the same place year after year can deplete the soil of certain nutrients and crop rotation can help prevent that. And four, soil stability. Alternating crops that have shallow roots and deep roots can improve soil stability and minimize erosion. Just because crop rotation is good most of the time doesn't mean it's good all of the time. Sweet potatoes are a crop that you shouldn't rotate, and here's why. Sweet potato roots are tuberous roots that belong to the morning glory family. When you eat a sweet potato, you're eating a root. Sweet potato roots are extremely invasive, difficult to kill, and they have a tendency to take over an entire area. I just harvested sweet potatoes in this bed last week, and there are spider-like roots all over the place in every corner buried deep underground. I did my best to remove as many roots as possible, but no matter how hard you try, you won't be able to remove them all. The deep roots will easily survive the winter and come spring, they will begin to regenerate underground. For this reason, you should never rotate sweet potato plants. Keep them isolated to the same space because if you plant them all over your garden, they will eventually take over your entire garden. You'll have sweet potatoes growing everywhere and that is not what you want. I grow my sweet potatoes in this one bed so I can keep them quarantined from the rest of my garden. Because they're so invasive, if you have a small garden, I recommend you grow your sweet potatoes in containers, sort of like how I grow these white potatoes right here. That way, you can ensure they don't overtake your entire garden. And if you're concerned about pests and disease, don't be. Even here in the coastal Carolinas, where the insect and disease pressure is through the roof in the summer, sweet potatoes have no problems with diseases or insects. The only thing they're susceptible to is vine damage from deer, rabbits, and caterpillars. If you fence them in to keep the deer and the rabbits out, and you occasionally spray them with BT or spinosad when moths are active, you should have little to no trouble. Keeping your sweet potatoes isolated to the same spot year after year can save you a lot of trouble in the long run. And that's today's two minute garden tip. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated.